But I went to the south side of Chicago. It's one of the places that's not really where the political advisors would tell you to go if you're in a Republican primary. I went to you know, Kensington and downtown in, in the inner city of Pennsylvania and in, in Philadelphia. And I'll tell you, the people in those rooms, especially in the south side of Chicago, where they're converting South Shore High School into an encampment for migrants who they're spending $7,000 per person per month on, this is the supposedly far left, nearly entirely black, Democratic voting bloc. And I have never heard more eloquent cases for securing the border and actually prioritizing the interests of Americans than I heard in that room. What did they say? They said, what about us? Yeah. It was, it was actually the right way to say that. And, and, and it came out in many ways where, look, we are Christians. We believe in treating these people humanely. But it's not right that they're spending $7,000 a month in getting baby formula when I couldn't find baby formula a year ago. I can't buy sneakers for my kids. They're providing sneakers for those kids. How does that work? How is that advancing my interest? And actually, this you just reminded me of this. <laughs> Many of them were asking me, as though I was on the side of it, of why on earth we're sending billions of dollars to Ukraine. So it was interesting to me that the traditional partisan boundaries as drawn are really sort of retrofitted. We're sort of shoehorning an old structure, we're sort of shoehorned the modern truth into sort of an antiquated view where I don't think the dividing line in our country is between Republicans and Democrats right now. I think it is between those of us who are pro-American, who believe in the ideals of this country, who will not apologize for those ideals, who will stand up and sacrifice for those ideals, and those of us who are, and it exists in this country, I mean, the Vice President's a great embodiment of this, anti-American. Those who wish to apologize for a nation founded on our ideals. But if you divide it up that way, it is not 50-50 anymore, it's not even close. It's easily 80-20 in our favor, and half the 20 are people younger than me who never learned what those ideals were in the first place. We're going to bring them along, too. And I think we have an opportunity to do in this country in 2024 what Ronald Reagan did in 1980, deliver a landslide election, call the bluff on the division. Much of it is artificial. I fell for it. Right? Even when I started this campaign, I'm running for a Republican candidate for U.S. president, I don't even talk about Republicans that much anymore. I, I try not to use the word. Not because it's a bad word, but because it doesn't mean anything. Right? If half the Republican, three quarters of the Republican Party has got the same policy as Biden on the most important force policy matter of our time, you know, and if much of the Democratic Party, or at least people on the south side of Chicago, believe in using the military on the southern border and putting the interests of Americans first, I'm not sure those labels are doing much for us now. And one of the things, I actually just got this stat yesterday from my campaign, 40% of the donors to our campaign are first time ever donors to the Republican Party in any form ever. And the normal number is 2%. So I think this should actually give us hope for possibility. If we're willing to take the shackles off a little bit, relax a little bit on thinking, mean, identity can be confining. Right? The left does this masterfully. You're black, therefore you can't achieve something. You're a woman, therefore you can't achieve something. Identity's confising. You can be imprisoned in the identities that you inherit. And I just want to be careful that we learn from the left, or the learn, learn, including what not to do, to be confined and imprisoned by our own identity of what it means to be Republican. Let's just let that word go and instead ask the question of what it actually means to be an American today. That's the question of our time. And you ask people my age that question, <laughs> you get like a deer in the headlights response. It's like, <laughs> it's a blank stare initially. But on the other side of that is then an introspection to say, okay, there are certain ideals that we fought a revolution for in this country. Self-governance over aristocracy, sovereignty as a nation, free speech, meritocracy that you get ahead in this country, not on the color of your skin, but on the content of your character and contributions. That's what it means to be an American. That's what we're running to. And honest to God, think, I, Tucker, I think that if we do this right, if we actually prioritize our vision, what we stand for, I think it's gonna be a landslide election for a, I'm not gonna say Republican candidate, a pro-American candidate in this race.